Welcome back to Entertainment Talk. Today I'm here to do a review for DC's Birds of Prey, the 2020 edition. Um, yeah, let's get straight into things here. We'll start off spoiler free, of course. I won't uh, do any spoilers until later in the podcast. Uh, I absolutely love this film. I um, think that this is, as, I, as I've put in the title, I think this is DC's best film since The Dark Knight. So, yeah, you can go through all the, all the DC films that have come out since then. I think this is better than all of them. Um, I don't really need to list them, I suppose. Um, I think that this is... I, I, I went in with quite high expectations, to be honest, which isn't always a good thing to do. You know, in today's day and age, hype can be a bad thing. Um, this exceeded my expectations, this film. Um, I think that this is... How can I put this? One of one of the best examples I've seen of a... not Not even just a comic book or a superhero, which... Yeah, they're not really superheroes in this. Um, one of the best examples of a female uh, team-up um, film, or even like TV show or whatever, I can't think off the top of my head of a better example of a portrayal of that. Uh, speaking of portrayals, I loved every single portrayal of all the characters in, in this film. Um, now, just for reference, in case some of you don't know, we do cover um, Arrow on... Um, Entertainment Talk, which is, of course, uh, finishing its final season. Um, Black Canary is in uh, Arrow as well. She's been in uh, Arrow for quite quite a few different seasons. There's actually two or three versions of, of that character in Arrow. Uh, there is, of course, a version of um, Black Canary in this film. Uh, I think she's portrayed really, really well. Um, for, like, for, like, her first appearance and things like that, I think that Huntress is uh, portrayed really, re- really, really well in this film. Um, I love Margot Robbie's return as a uh, Harley Quinn, who's of course basically the standout character here. But uh, I think she is really, really, really great. And to be to be completely honest, which is you know what I'm here to do. Um, in terms of not even just my favorite superhero characters, not even just in terms of my favorite DC or comic book super, uh, characters, Harley Quinn is rapidly rising up the list of my favorite characters in like anything. Um, and I think that's quite something because, I mean, you know, she was in, uh, I've seen some of like, the clips of the Harley Quinn show and all that sort of thing. She looks great in that. Uh, of course, she's here in, you know, in Birds of Prey. Uh, she was, of course, in Suicide Squad, probably the best thing to come out of that film. Um, and uh, she's really quickly going up the list of my favorite characters. Um if you if you were to say to me is there a best is there a fil- is there a version of this film that I would like more or I think is better I can't imagine that version because I think this is that version um I think that uh, I I really really hope that this, this film does really well at the box office because I not only want a sequel because I not only want a sequel to this film I want to see all of these characters again um i can't, i can't wait for the potential future of these characters and to be really honest like now that i look at uh you know i didn't quite like aquaman but it did really well and it was a good film for that audience that it goes to uh shazam was really really good really fun uh, and birds of prey is kind of continuing dc streak for me it's uh, someone said something the other day online that basically every film since justice league for the dceu has been really really good and um i think i'll probably agree with that to be honest um was there a film that was in between justice league and aquaman i can't remember to be quite i know, I know there was joker obviously which isn't a dceu film and that was really really good in that but uh just, just kind of because i as you know as i was on my journey home i was thinking about this film thinking about dc thinking about these characters and everything i've just seen for the last hour 40 odd minutes or so and uh I'm really, really looking forward to Wonder Woman. I'm really looking forward to uh, the Batman. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with Suicide Squad. And um, I do think, you know, with the last couple of films, you know, with the, with the personal except, exception of Aquaman, I think that DC's kind of not sorted themselves out, but getting back on track, I think. Uh, and this film's certainly a good example of that. Um, and this is, a, this is a really good example of how to... How can I put this? Yeah, c- kind of just going along with my comments earlier about like this is probably one of my not only one of my favorite but one of the best female superhero uh, not so, sorry not superhero just female team ups in general. Uh, I mean the the most recent example I can think of that I recently saw was Charlie's Angels and this this film kicks that film's ass to be to be quite honest. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, I really hope this does well at the box office. But box office, sorry, I hope that. Um, 
gender politics doesn't get in the way of this. You know, certain men that don't want to support this film. I am, of course, a guy, obviously, that wants to support this film. I really, really enjoyed it. I hope it does work at the box office. I hope it helps, basically, DC's future. I hope that we uh, see these characters again and everything like that. Um... There's a couple of things I do want to talk about which I really, really liked, but they're more spoilery stuff. Uh, spoilery things, rather. Um, what, else, what, what was the other thing I'll say? Uh, post credit scene. I wasn't sure if they'd have what had if they were going to have one or not, and I hadn't read anything about one. I would just say that if you want a little laugh at the end of this film, which is already quite funny, I want to talk about the balance of the really good balance of comedy and drama in a minute as well. If you want a good, quick little laugh. Um, and you've got the time to stick around, which I said to myself, okay, I'm going to stick around to see if they do anything post-credits-wise. Because I know that's more of a Marvel thing, but this is still a superhero comic book film, and they tend to have those as well. It's it's alright, the, the, the post-credits scene, of course, I can't really tell you what it is. It's a, it's just, it's a good little joke, uh, to be honest. I, I got a good kind of laugh at it, out out from it. It's it's intended to be that, and uh, if if you've got the time... And you want to stick around for it. I'd recommend that you do so. If you're in a little bit of a rush to get home. For whatever number of reasons. Or to go out somewhere afterwards. Um, I think you can maybe leave it. And probably see it like in a week on YouTube. The post credit scene not the film. Uh, so there's that as well. Um, yeah. P- uh, balance of comedy and drama. A lot of of course DC. The DCEU got a lot of stick early on. For like okay Man of Steel is kind of dark or whatever. And Justice League is dark. And Batman v Superman is dark. And Suicide Squad is dark. And DC is just dark and miserable. And then we got um, Aquaman, which which was ve- which veered more into the fun stuff. And then we had um, Shazam, which was definitely veering more into the fun stuff. I think this is DC's best example for, for, for quite a while that I can remember that they've balanced. Because there's some really serious stuff that happens in this film. There's some like quite dark things that happen in this film. And there's some really good comedy in here as well, uh, I think. And... Uh, the way this film kind of not flips between them in terms of like um the tone but it you kind of figure out what tone this film is it, it's it's a serious thing that's happening but the film finds really good ways of squeezing in not squeezing in sorry of putting in some really good comedy and it's earned and it's good and it's funny at least i laughed at the majority of the comedy um and uh yeah i i can't think like i said i can't think of a version of this film where i go oh you could have maybe done that instead or this character could have been better or i mean to be to be honest my only because i've i've shined a lot of positivity on this film for like almost eight minutes uh so the negative stuff i think this film takes i'll just say slightly long too long to get going but like only slightly because once it kind of you you sort of know when it kicks on at least it, there was a moment for me where i was like okay now we have that this film has kind of kicked on a bit and i mean you have to introduce like a new version of black canary you have to introduce a new version of huntress you have to sort out like okay what's going on with harley quinn like post joker and all that sort of thing because of course she's broken up from joker um i like as well the way that this gives a middle finger to jared leto and like not just his performance as the joker but of course because some of his disgusting behavior uh, around the whole Suicide Squad set and everything that he did there, which I don't need to repeat here, but uh, I think this is a really funny in a way. Uh, cause it, there's a, there's a few kind of comedic scenes with the 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 middle finger kind of given to to not not just the character of the Joker and her tr- uh, sorry his treatment of Harley Quinn, but like just a kind of a middle finger to Jared Leto, which I think he deserves for 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 kind of some of the stuff that he did uh, for Suicide Squad, which th- this film basically is a sequel to suicide squad but i don't think you i think if you say okay matt do i need to watch suicide squad to like know about harley quinn and stuff i don't think you really need to and i'd also not actually recommend the film itself in general uh suicide squad i i'd very very much uh recommend birds of prey um so in terms of some people had concerns about like okay is harley quinn gonna steal the spotlight in this and that sort of thing i think it's more of a case that she kind of starts off the plot and the story in this and then the birds of prey characters are kind of introduced and integrated so in a way she does take the spotlight but in a way that actually makes a lot of sense it isn't sort of like okay let's just push the birds of prey to the side and this is like a harley quinn film i don't quite think it's like that but um it, it's basically her, it they sort of have used this film in the best of ways to say okay we've already established margot robbie as harley quinn uh this is post joker forget about joker forget about jared leto 
and all that and like here is some new characters for her to kind of team up with uh and i think they do that to to the best of their ability to, to i i can't again going along with the theme of could this been a better version could there have been a better version of this film i think in most in most aspects i can think of off the top of my head i don't know how you could necessarily improve this film um the the only other this isn't even really a complaint i wanted to spend more time with these characters and that's just based off like i could have easily watched this for two and a half hours i could have easily watched these characters uh for, for a lot longer because this film like i said is only about an hour or 40 minutes um it actually felt shorter than that but in the best possible way of like the pacing it, the pacing certainly picks i know i kind of said earlier about um about the pacing is a little off at the start but i just think it's they, they, they try to at the start say like okay the birds of prey aren't quite here yet you know that they're gonna be here but let's figure out a way to get harley quinn to introduce those characters into the dceu because these versions of these characters this new version of huntress and this new version of black canary we've not actually met them yet so you have to introduce them um so i think they do that really really well but yeah my only my if i'm to come out with one small complaint is i think the pacing is slightly off at the start and the other thing which i don't even consider to be a complaint is i wanted to spend more time with these characters because i just loved seeing them i love them because it, in, they had their own individual scenes as well i think both all of the individual scenes and all of the team up scenes uh when they when they team up obviously a bit later uh i think all of them are excellent uh i really really enjoyed the action in this i haven't even talked about the action in this film yet um there's some really really great action stuff in this in this film some of it's a little bit like okay that's that's a comic booky kind of thing but this is based off a comic book so what what do, what do you kind of expect like that there's some action stuff in this is the action stuff in this film that's a little bit sillier but in a very comic booky way in a comic book film so it makes sense it's not like you're putting comic booky kind of action into um gosh i can't think of like a, a film that's not a comic book basically uh so it kind of fits in with you know this is still a comic book film it's based off of dc comic book characters so that fits in really well as well um i can't think of any other complaints i have i just want to see these characters again i want a sequel i want to see these characters also team up with other people in the dceu uh i haven't even talked about ian mcgregor yet as black mask he's fantastic uh whoever it is that plays um Victor Zaz, he's he's quite good. He's a bit more of like a side, kind of sidekick to uh, to to Black Mask, but Black Mask is great in this film. Um, and yeah, I can't think of any other way to positively say how much I really really love this film. And um, you know, the credits came up, it ended really really well, and I just wanted more uh, in 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 the best possible way. So I don't know how else to say that I really really enjoyed this film. So uh, it was uh, yeah, can't wait for the future. I'll, I'll be pretty disappointed if it's like you know let, let's say like a, in about a month's time dc says you know this didn't do very well at the box office uh highly you know margaret Roy, it's just a hypothetical situation that like okay let's say this film doesn't make enough money at the box office and like uh margaret robbie doesn't renew a contract or something and then the others don't want to come back i'll be really really disappointed if that happens um so i hope that they renew everyone's contracts for more films um and we see more of them in the future so uh, I think that's about everything I've got for the um, spoiler free section of this film. So highly recommend it. Uh, you don't really have need to see need to have seen many other DC films in here. Because I mean most of these characters are like new additions. So they're kind of introducing them. But you don't need to see Suicide Squad. In fact just don't bother watching Suicide Squad. Because um, it's also bad and we're getting a new version anyway. Is that next year I think? The James Gunn Suicide Squad. Which I think has Margot Robbie in it. I can't really remember the... Uh, cast uh list name because the the, uh, the cast list because it's really really big but um yeah go and see this film if you like these if you like uh, just good films to be honest you don't really need to be into superheroes or comic books or dc yeah really good stuff overall i don't think there's anything else left that i've got to say so uh please join me in the spoiler section in a minute but not yet don't leave anywhere don't go anywhere just yet i've got some uh, housekeeping to do let you know what else we've been up to on entertainment talk and then we'll get into some spoilers and so i'll see you for all that stuff in a minute but don't leave yet we're not in the spoilers yet leave in a little bit i'll let you know when to leave today's sponsor is kualu if you'd like to get started with a domain name and a website today just click on the link in the show notes and that will take you over to Kualu to get started. They also have a live support chat system that you can use which is in the bottom right hand corner. 
So get started with a new website and domain name today with Kualu. Hey everybody, if you would like to get the ad-free versions of all of our podcasts and support entertainment talk along the way, all you need to do is head over to patreon.com forward slash entertainment talk, sign up either as a creator or as a Patreon, there's no difference there. That's just the option for either becoming a creator now or just staying as a patron for the moment. And then all you need to do is support us at the $1 level tier. That will get you access to all of the ad-free podcasts that we've done in the past and get you access to all the ad-free podcasts in that month as well. So it's a great way to support us on Entertainment Talk and to get rid of the ads and get your ad-free podcasts. You can also become a patron at the $3 level tier that gets you access to ad-free podcasts and allows you to redeem a review of a TV show or a film of entirely your choice. That's one per month for either a TV show or a film review which is at the $3 level tier. As always, thank you very much for listening. Back to the show. Alright, recently on Entertainment Talk, uh, I did a little uh, podcast update thing for Better Call Saul, The Walking Dead and Westworld. Those are all going to be returning for their latest season soon. Uh, We're going to have slight changes with the schedule uh, to do with those and you can listen to that if you want an update. There's no spoilers for any of those shows in that particular podcast. Uh, That's just a podcast update sort of thing. Uh, Gaming Talk yesterday, we talked about Ty the Tasmanian Tiger from the PlayStation 2 is getting a HD PS4 port. Uh, in March and then a little bit later on uh, for, for some other consoles well, sorry 31st of March for the Switch HD port and then a little bit later in the year for the other consoles Xbox One, PS4 etc uh, we talked about Nintendo and how they're apparently not worried about the Xbox uh, Series X and about the PS5 I think they should be but we discussed that uh, and we also talked about Rockstar someone at the company uh, I can't quite remember his name but we talked about it on the podcast uh, has left Rockstar and we talked about what potential impact that could have on the future of Rockstar games including Red Dead, GTA, Bully, all those red, all, all those sorts of games. Uh, Classic Reviews has finished for Season 3. I did a Season 3 rankings podcast, so you can check that out as well. Uh, speaking of Walking Dead, Walking Dead Season 10B preview podcast is out. You can listen to mine and David's thoughts. That one does have spoilers in it because we talk about the upcoming uh, season of The Walking Dead or second half of Season 10 for The Walking Dead. Uh, so we talked about that. Uh, what else we got here? Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul is also returning for Season 5. Me and David did a preview podcast for the return of Better Call Saul in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, United Cast May United drew nil nil with Wolves at home and Bruno Fernandes made his long-awaited debut and it was really, really good to see him in a United shirt playing for Manchester United so that was really good as well um there's going to be a bit of a break with football I think it's Monday the 16th of uh, excuse me of February that uh we return we've played Chelsea I can't remember if it's home or away but uh Chelsea Monday night uh on the 16th of February we return there it's like a winter break they're doing at the moment uh let's play Sundays 26 for the Elter World uh good talk uh for uh, good place for the good talk um good talk podcast for the good place on NBC and Netflix a series finale season four episode 13 I reviewed that uh, me and David later today will be doing a series wrap up so have a look out for that but that's going to be a little bit later on um I suspect I'll be uploading this podcast before that one so look out for both of these or or that one as well uh what else we got uh gaming talk the week before we talked about uh Konami is considering returning to making a Silent Hill game we don't know if that means more pachinko, more pachinko machines or an actual video game we don't know uh EA is considering making a return to KOTOR Knights of the Old Republic the old Star Wars video game uh we talked about this month's games with gold and PS Plus games as well and that's what we've been doing on entertainmenttalk.org and on podcast platforms right I'm going to go into spoilers now so if you don't want to know what happens in Birds of Prey on a more specific level, obviously I've given this praise the high, given this film the highest praise I possibly could. I don't know how I could do give it more praise. Um, but yeah, if you've not seen Birds of Prey and you want to see it this weekend or today, when it, whenever you're going to see it, uh, first of all, I highly, highly recommend that you do, and then come back to this point in the podcast and listen to the rest of it. So if you're listening on a podcast player, go into that, press pause, leave it there. Once you've seen the film, you can just come back and press play. If you're listening on the website, you can either press back or click on the homepage or whatever you've got to do to turn the podcast off because I'm going to go into spoilers now. Uh, so some highlights for me. Uh, really, really liked seeing the uh, canary cry from uh, Black Canary in this film. Of course, that's a little bit later on in the film, but I was sort of like wondering about that during the film because obviously she's like kicking ass and beating people up and all that sort of thing, just like all, all the others are doing. But uh, we knew, of course, about her powers 
and um well i did anyway some of you might not have not have known like what she was about and all that sort of thing which is what this film is here to do uh it's to tell you about the character uh they, they kind of hinted to it earlier on didn't they with the singing and she breaks uh a, a glass of d- a drink basically uh earlier on in the film so they kind of hinted to it uh, hinted to it uh early on i like the way that they did that that was pretty good um yeah just really like the kind of way they sort of um just like okay harley quinn's done with the joker she's moved on she's struggling a little bit with being single because she she, i think she said she said something about like she because she was sort of in the relationship for so long she's sort of not used to being single and on her own some people have that effect when they come out of relationships Uh, it's not to do with like she needs him or anything because she clearly doesn't but um because she's great enough on her own and of course she meets some uh new friends uh, later on in the film but um yeah, a really kind of good uh, middle finger to Jared Leto, which I, uh, yeah, just, just screw him, screw everything he's kind of done and all that sort of thing. I thought that was great. Uh, they didn't, like, you know, beat me over the head or beat the audience over the head with it. They sort of brought it up in appropriate situations, I thought. Uh, you know, her kind of explaining at the start, of like, okay, I'm out on my own now sort of thing. I'm looking for my my next step in life, like post-Joker, he's gone or whatever, whatever's happened to him. I'm, I'm assuming he's still alive, but, you know, he's not in this film. Um, thought that was great. And then, like, the, not even, like, the dartboard, the knife board, I suppose you could call it, where she's got this, like, drawing up of uh, Jared Leto's Joker and she's obviously been throwing knives and stuff at it. I thought that was uh, just, just uh, another kind of good scene of that um but yeah the one they probably the biggest highlight for me is uh the canary cry because I, I wondered when it was happening and i didn't know how much of the audience was aware that she could do that um because she's like i like i've said at the start my previous experience i've watched you know uh almost all of arrow and all that sort of thing uh, or at least what's been available up to this point of course final season and all that sort of thing um and that's obviously a big thing in arrow which is when uh those different because there's lots of different versions of um uh, the both the white canary and the black canary um in arrow so i was, I was looking forward to seeing the the uh, portrayal of that character in this film and that was really really good as well um what's the other thing i wanted to talk about um yeah just kind of a um I mean, just seeing the, these these women team up was really, really great. Uh, my favourite kind of scene of that was when they're in... What was it called? Like the, 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 the Madhouse kind of circus building they were sort of in. When uh, Victor Zaz and everybody else kind of shows up and, like, chaos breaks out. I think you all know what, what scene I'm talking about. Um, really kind of enjoyed, like, everybody's sort of confused about, like everybody's motivations a bit like Huntress comes in and she's obviously got this uh she wants to kill Victor's eyes and that and then like no one's really sure about that. okay Harley Quinn you've like taken this woman and um like what's your kind of plan and that sort of thing and like her motivations beyond that I thought all oh, that was pretty good but just the kind of um scenes of where okay they've been shown individually kind of at that point like what they can do on their own you know they're all very 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 capable women and all that sort of thing uh and then kind of just uh, this cool like girl power moment of uh them teaming up and like let's take down the bad guys i thought that was handled really really well uh and i really really liked that as well and of course black mask is like outside waiting for them and everything and then these guys come down on um what, what do you call that you know when someone's got a rope hanging from a helicopter basically isn't it and these guys are like dropping down i've never known that what well, what that's called but dropping down from a helicopter basically and uh they're <laughs> finally a little bit of when um what was it i think harley quinn's because they go down that sort of slide tube thing i can't think of what it's called they go down that don't they and uh harley quinn does this little laugh as she's going down i thought she was like the big comic comedic kind of relief of this film some of the other women in this film were making good jokes but in terms of the lead comedy stuff um harley quinn's doing most of that of course and i thought that was really really great as well a couple of the uh what what i want to clear up about the um slightly sillier comic booky sort of fight scenes kind of like when um i can't remember her name but you know in uh uh, the the, uh, the the detective in this film, I can't remember hearing her name in the film to be honest, but when she comes in and she's like, okay, I'm going to take you in and uh, she tells Harley Quinn to drop it and she was like, what, drop the phone? I was like, yeah, drop the phone and then like she just flips it through the air and kicks it in her face. I was like, okay, that's kind of silly and fun, but it's it's still a comic book film at the end of the day. Uh, I thought that was really good. Uh, there was one other one as well. There was two that I kind of remember. Uh, she kicked a guy in the face in like a very specific way. 
uh that was pretty fun so i i, I quite enjoyed that um yeah cassandra kane for those of you that don't know she apparently turns into some version of uh batgirl the more known version of batgirl is barbara gordon who is of course uh jim gordon um uh the uh the um uh chief of police whatever it whatever that title is uh of his job um he's that's of course his daughter she's not in um this film as you all know but uh yeah cassandra kane is supposed to become some sort of version of batgirl because that, that was the one thing when this film was kind of getting ready to come out is like okay you've got huntress you've got harley quinn and you've got uh black canary you're missing batgirl like where is she and that was one of my questions as well was like okay she's meant to be like the leading or the founding member of the birds of prey that sort of didn't matter in this film and i i think that came off pretty well um but uh yeah interesting to see you know at the end of the film harley quinn does kind of say okay they formed this group it's called the birds of prey and like yeah uh cassandra is now my like apprentice kind of thing and she does a fun little kind of wink at the camera at the end and i thought all oh, that was pretty fun as well so uh everybody ends relatively in a good place they've got this business she's got this business card as well of like kicking ass or whatever it was i thought that was kind of cool um but yeah really 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 enjoyed this film um I, yeah, I'll I'll be really disappointed if we if we don't get more from these or if it fails at the box office for some reason. In terms of, I'm not one to like do box office box office predictions, so I have no idea how much this will maybe make by like you know first weekend by Monday maybe. But I I just hope it does really well because I want to see these characters again. Um, and in terms of like you know, th- there's no real crossover necessarily in this film with you know other DC characters and stuff like you know, there's no Wonder Woman in this, there's no Shazam in here or whatever. Uh, I did like the references to like post Suicide Squad because you had that um, poster, didn't you, of Captain Boomerang, um, and uh, like he- he's wanted or something, and she's like, oh yeah, I remember that guy. It's a nice little kind of nod to that film and stuff. So um, that was pretty good, but uh, yeah. It, I I would be interested to see like, okay, what would someone like Wonder Woman or Shazam teaming up with these ladies, these, these women, uh, be like? What would that kind of be like? I think obviously someone like Shazam would suit it a bit better because he's more of kind of the fun character, but Wonder Woman can still be fun as well. So, um, yeah, that might be kind of cool. I think that might be pretty good. So, um, yeah, what else did I want to talk about with this film? Uh, Black Mask, yeah, really really great stuff from Ewan McGregor um that was really really good victor zaz is not a character i like particularly care too much for and he was he was just a good simple kind of sidekick to um to black mask in this film as well i thought that was really good so yeah i mean of course both of those are dead so um because victor zaz's death wasn't quite as clear it was like okay he's been kind of stabbed in the neck with this thing and he's sort of bleeding like off screen a bit but obviously black mask is dead because he gets blown to bits uh, in terms of the r rating um they used it fairly well didn't they they didn't use it like too over the top but like certain scenes where it's a bit obvious to where you'd maybe need it like like the death of black mask at the end being like blown to bits you, you could have gotten away with like okay if, if this was a pg-13 you like you cut the camera back maybe to harley quinn and cassandra at that point and you just hear an explosion you could probably have gotten away with that but uh yeah really really good overall i don't think i have anything else to talk about with this film um but uh i just want to see these characters again which i've already said so there is that um but yes hopefully you have seen birds of prey if you stuck around for this long in the in the spoiler section uh what did you think of the film did you do you want to see these characters again are you disappointed for any particular reason let let, let me know of course and maybe you didn't like the film as much as i did maybe you liked it but not as much as i did uh that's completely fine uh tell me why uh, you did or didn't like it etc uh always good to hear feedback and stuff um i've seen mostly you know positive reviews on, on online and stuff from critics whatever that's supposed to mean these days but uh yeah good stuff overall so uh but yes next up um next up film wise is going to be sonic next week and then there is oh what's it called the invisible man uh with uh, elizabeth moss which comes out it said the 28th which i think is the week after that if my maths is maths is correct on that and then we've got a quiet place in march um uh, Black Widow isn't until May. You've got oh, what's the other thing for April? Is New Mutants finally? My goodness me, finally that comes out. Uh, there's something else probably in March and April which I've forgotten. But yeah, Sonic next week. Uh, week after that, The Invisible Man with Elizabeth Moss, and then 
Um, because Quiet Place isn't until 20th of March, I'm assuming there's something else out before that, but I just can't quite recall. And then, of course, James Bond, uh, I can't remember the name of the, of the next one, but the last Daniel Craig one, possibly, um, is April 3rd, so, which is really close to New Mutants, but anyway, uh, those are the, those are the films that I'm looking at in the near future, basically, uh, that sort of thing, so, yeah, good stuff, overall, very happy, um, and we shall see what's, what Sonic is like next week, I suppose, very different change of pace, uh, it's a video game film adaption, so we'll see how good that is, and, uh, that's it from me, I think, from this review, an easy 10 from me, easy 10, I have, like, like I said, I had the one small problem, which is the slight pacing issues at the start. But I, t- to be honest, I, and I hadn't brought this up for some reason. I guess I just maybe forgotten to. Once the film to me got going, I'd just forgotten about the pacing issues. They were just no longer an issue to me. And then from there on out, I just had no problems with the film. So I should probably have said that in the spoiler-free section. But anyway, ten out of ten for me. Best DC film since The Dark Knight, and uh, I'm looking forward to. It. I'm now. I'm now, now. I'm actually looking forward to DC's. Future Slate, whereas before I was like, oh, is the Batman going to be good? Is Harley Quinn going to be good? Like, there's no Superman, what are they doing? Where's Green Lantern? You know, why haven't they got Henry Cavill back? All that sort of thing, which is still questions. You know, why haven't they got Henry Cavill back? But, uh, yeah, very excited. Uh, Anyway, I'll see you all next week for uh, Sonic. Hopefully I get to see that on Thursday. I do have a family thing on Friday next week. So if I don't get to see it on Thursday or Friday, I'll definitely be seeing it on Monday. So look out for that next week as well. But you can, of course, find all the content that we've got. Oh, I didn't tell you how you could let me know what you think of this film. Matthew at EntertainmentTalk.org, Twitter, E-Talk UK. There's a contact page and information in your show notes. Let me know if you think it's good, bad, why, etc. All that sort of thing. Uh, But yes, entertainmenttalk.org is where you can find all the content, all the content that I've mentioned, and loads of other content as well. So there's that. Uh, If you want to support the podcast, support Entertainment Talk, we're on Patreon. Please check out the $1 and $3 level tiers. Um, What's the other thing? Of course, yeah, uh, Amazon affiliate link. If you want to shop on Amazon, we'll get a small cut of what you spend. It won't cost you extra. iTunes feeds, please write, review, and subscribe to those as well. That would really help us out. Uh, Of course, make sure you subscribe in general because then you'll get sent new episodes of uh, either the film reviews feed or the main entertainment talk feed or whatever you choose to subscribe to uh word of mouth please tell your friends family people that you know about the website and your itunes feeds if you see them talking about films games tv shows uh or many night and sports uh tell them about the content social media of course i'm sure that well there's already opinions about this film on social media so please share this as well on social media facebook and twitter and if you're allowed to put them in different facebook groups last thing video games if you want to watch us play different video games me and david stream on twitch robert streams on mixer and look out for let's play sundays thanks for listening and i'll see you next time goodbye